Hi, I want to tell you today about the flower audio loudness meter and show you how you can use it to get consistent and pleasant loudness levels in your music. Everyone wants their tracks to stand out by being loud, but there is no denying that music has become less enjoyable to listen to for extended periods. Here's where we think the problem with the process is. The A-B comparisons that are made during production are instant and they just don't convey how you would feel about the sound after listening to a few songs. We developed the flower audio loudness meter to help people know where they stand in the loudness wars and solve this problem. Let me create it here in the reason rack. I want it to be just below the master section here. I want it to measure all the audio coming out of reason. So I need it to be the last device in the signal chain. To achieve this, I unplug the master section's output and connect it to the input of the loudness meter instead. And I connect the output of the loudness meter to Reason's output. I have some audio tracks here, and these are some of my favorite songs. I've aligned each one here so that the busiest parts of these songs will be within this loop. Let me play the first one and see its loudness level. The loudness meter has two loudness algorithms. The perceived loudness employs an algorithm that's been shown in scientific studies to match people's perceptions of loudness. It makes the frequencies above one kilohertz more important in the calculation. And it doesn't care about the very, very low frequencies. The RMS algorithm is the same, except it doesn't do this way. We've called it the loudness meter but the max peak section is also very useful. It shows you how far you are from clipping. I can see here that the music is 0.2 decibels from clipping, for example. The time window option here selects how long the loudness and the maximum peak will be calculated over. Longer windows will give you a more stable number. I want to play these other songs too, but this video isn't about criticizing certain artists. So I've muted them, but I'm measuring the levels by using the loudness meter as an insert. This is okay, since I haven't changed the mixer settings for these tracks at all. You'll notice that this song, Lack of a Better Name, is much less loud than the song Fall. Part of the reason for this is that it peaks only at minus 4.1 decibels. So normally, I just normalize this audio clip and then measure the loudness. But instead, I can use the display mode button here and this shows what we call the local dynamic range of the audio and it's the difference between the maximum peak and the loudness level. Apart from the fact that the sign has changed, it's the same thing as normalizing the audio first and then measuring the loudness level. If I do the same with this one though, there's no change because this track is already peaking at zero. But you can see that even with normalization, lack of a better name is a lot less loud than fall. And indeed, I can listen to the album it's in for a very, very long time and keep enjoying it. While even though I like these other songs a lot, I just get tired of them very quickly. Let's also look at the RMS levels for these songs. You can see here that Lack of a Better Name and Fall have very similar RMS levels, but there's a mountain of difference in terms of how loud they feel to my ears even when they have the same peak level. And the perceived algorithm captures this very successfully. So I suggest you try this out too with your favorite songs. Now I'm going to open the file for the song we were just listening to and I'm imagining I'm just done mixing it and I want to get it to be a little louder before I finish it completely. I have the loudness meter connected between the master section and reasons output as before and I can see that my level is below my target. I'm going to create a maximizer and play with it to see if I can get it a little louder without compromising the audio quality. I can see it's clipping here and I can see in the loudness meter by how much it's clipping. So I'm going to reduce the gain here a bit and play a little bit more. This is much better. I'm gonna stop here, 
When I finished this track a while back, I used some other tricks like playing with the master bus compressor and multiband compression to get it a little bit louder than this, but I think you get the idea. Next time I finish a track, I can go for a similar loudness level so that all my tracks can be consistent. Let me show you one other feature here, which is the input switching. I have an audio track here and I'm calling it my reference track. It's a song I had made before and I want to switch between the two songs every now and then and compare. If I connect the direct out to reference input here, I can easily switch between my song and this song using the input selection buttons at the front. Now the aim here is not to copy something I had done before or to copy someone else's track another time, but to challenge myself and hear the differences between these two tracks. Many professional mixing engineers do this and they swear by this method. And the loudness meter makes it very easy to do this in reason. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you'll try or buy the loudness meter at the propeller head shop. And we appreciate your feedback and suggestions at flower at flowerradio.com. Thanks.